Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to do a reading on just Kanye and seeing what the year ahead looks like for him and see if his mom wants to either pop up in the cards or actually fully come in and talk. I did meditate and communicate with her earlier. She says that she does feel calmer, so we'll see i just left the door open for her to join us if she wants to and if not we understand so spirit please join us and connect us to the energy what is surrounding kanye west right now and how will the next three months look for him I did my praying while I was cleansing my cards from all the other readings that I've done today and I just wanted to jump right in. It is funny how I see all these people being like, I'm so happy for Kanye, you know, and I mean, would we assume that somebody who was getting a divorce was happy or that we would be happy about it? It's just really showing like how much people are not really into the card Jenners anymore, or whatever the hell they call themselves. Okay, so Eight of Pentacles, Seven of Wands, and High Priestess is the underlying energy. And Donda came in to say that's me, you know, being the High Priestess. It's basically that she really is going to be, I mean, she's always with Kanye anyways, but she's really hardcore. Going to like be like up on his shoulder like at every second backing him up and helping him through this because you know despite the fact that Kanye was very over everything as well I mean it's still the, the thing about Kanye is other than a lot of the of his peers in the industry he wasn't a baby daddy and he didn't have a bunch of women pregnant and he only had the one marriage you know i mean not that he was like out here being like this amazing guy to everybody or anything like that i'm just saying like he wasn't out here doing the future thing and stuff like that like you have to give him credit for making sure that he you know waited until he felt like it was the right time for him um, Don does definitely need to come in and talk in a second, you guys. <laughs> but at the same time now, you know, it's more about him being worried about the kids, you know, and the heartbreak that I see here with the Ten of Swords and the Four of Swords is definitely in regards to his children and what he is, um really just wor the most worried about right now unfortunately justice and the knight of swords he is gonna you know have a battle on his hands with them they're gonna try to take a lot of his money to you guys so it and remember you guys earlier i said in the earlier reading um that kim was trying to protect her money and her value by leaving him too. She sold like a big percentage of her company. Well, well it was 20%. That's still big for 200 million to Cody. 
and then announced that they're coming out with a skincare line next year. So I didn't know that. <laughs> I've been like sitting in this room recording videos all day long and trying to get my computer to work right so that I can finish the New Year's readings and stuff because my computer has been being funky and I'm trying to get my backup one to work. Um, and so the only time that I really got online today, I'm like, I was just literally checking stuff like, oh, there's something that's probably kind of like mildly interesting or people ask me about later and I'll, um, you know, put it on the list or whatever. And I see like, oh, Kim and Connie are getting a divorce. And I was like, well, let me just go do the reading because I was actually going to sit down and watch YouTube videos for a minute. <laughs> so... I did not see any of the news today and then I, you know, got off of everything and got off Station Head and I was like, holy crap, there's all this stuff coming out. Well, I saw that one before I got on Station Head because we talked about it over there, but I meant, you know, the weekend with his face being weird, all this shit. I'm like, I missed a lot today. <laughs> so, um... Kanye will get through this, you guys. And professionally, this is going to be a good year for him, though. His Gap Yeezy collection will do well. It's going to be... Um, like, when you know how, like, certain lines collaborate with Target and everybody rushes to get all the pieces, like Lily Pulitzer or somebody like that, it's going to be similar, but everybody's going to bum rush, you know, to Gap so that they can go get affordable Yeezy things. <laughs> and so he's going to actually be, that's going to be going well for him. And I do see other deals and things coming in as well. It's just that obviously the personal life stuff is going to be very difficult for him. And this is what I did pick up in the first time I pulled cards on him too, was that you know, in terms of success, Connie is about to have a really great year. But in terms of his personal life, it's going to be a really big battle. But I think that this is also like, remember how when he and Amber Rose broke up and he was having a difficult time and then he gave us an amazing album afterwards because Kanye does know how to turn real heartbreak and pain into something that you know other people can connect to so god you guys can you imagine if we get like an 808 and heartbreaks like album again from him out of this like that would be great but we might get a poopity scoop except it's like Kim Jong-un Kim Jong-un <laughs> or Chris Jong-un Chris Jong-un <laughs> We're like, what the hell is Kanye doing now? Oh my God, we thought he was going to be better getting away from them. So this is the thing that Donda wants to say. First and foremost, when I was talking about, you know, Kanye waiting, she said, well, he planned on that. So remember when he spoke about wanting Kim to get an abortion when she was pregnant with North. What Donda is saying is, you know, like if the Kardashians hadn't done certain things to him, which listen to Station Head, you'll figure out what I mean. And Kim hadn't gotten pregnant, Kim would have been Amber Rose part two for Kanye, where it was the ego trip, the hot girl, it made him feel like a badass rapper that, you know, he's got this sex symbol on his arm but he eventually would have gotten bored with it because at the end of the day, you know, we all have duality in us anyways, but especially Gemini's. Air signs really all have a lot of duality in us because Libras are the scales, Aquarius is the water bearers, and, you know, Gemini is the twins. So we very much can lean into one side or other of our personality and our traits that come with our sign, good or bad. And so... You know, the bad part of Kanye gets caught up in the fluff and the aesthetic and the sexy and, oh, this makes me look good. But the soul part of Kanye needs 
somebody who is going to be on top of him to make sure that he has some structure to his life because if you're not he's literally going to be like a balloon floating around number two he needs a lot of intellectual stimulation and somebody who can communicate with him about intelligent and you know crazy thoughts and the things that he's interested in and everything so he needs somebody who's much more intellectual when it really comes down to who would be a good match for him rather than somebody who's look at me I want to play dress up and be your Barbie doll and that's what Donda keeps referring to Kim as the Barbie doll so what she is saying is Kim purposely got pregnant and <clears throat> basically pulled the trap him because she's saying that, you know, if we noticed, how often was Kanye really around Kim or coming to spend time with Kim when she was pregnant with North? Kanye was in Paris recording his album and Kim was the one who was getting sick and having to go to the hospital seven months pregnant after getting off these long flights that she was taking back and forth to see him. And Donda's like, Kanye had already started pulling away from her. And, you know, part of the whole Kim claiming that she hated being pregnant is that she hated that she was alone and that it didn't work out the way that she thought because, you know, Kanye came into it praising her and he was defeating the narcissistic side of her and making her think that she was just this absolute dreamboat dream girl. But... You know, when it came down to it, it was all about, you know, the fantasy and the idea, but not actually the reality of the situation. So it would have been, you know, like, oh, they dated for a year or two and then they broke up and Kanye moved on to another model or somebody else, you know, a singer that just popped up or whatever. He wouldn't have actually ended up with Kim. The thing is, is that Kanye carries so much guilt with him about what happened to his mom. And we'll get into that. He felt like his mom would be disappointed in him if he had a child and he wasn't a husband to that child's mother. That he wasn't fully in that child's life. And you guys remember, Kanye is a child of divorce too. And children of divorce, you know, either have the idea that you just quit on things and you don't try sometimes or they're like overly like trying to make their marriage work against all odds and hold on because they've already experienced what a broken family is and they don't want their children going through that you know and that's not always the case for all divorced kids I'm just saying you know those can be issues and what Donda is saying is you know Kanye thinks about the times that his father wasn't around when he was growing up and he never wanted that for his daughter because he may have been you know starting to fall back on Kim but Kanye has been obsessed with North and he really does love his kids very much and so you know it was really North that made him feel like he needed to marry Kim and really try to make things work for North Saint. And then, you know, obviously Saint and Chicago and Psalm. So, it, she definitely trapped him in more than one way. Because, like I said, there was other things going on that she did too. On top of getting pregnant. Donda's saying that because Kanye feels so much guilt surrounding her death. He tunes her out a lot. And she said she hates when he makes an assumption of what would Donda have wanted him to do because he chooses wrong when he does that. And she's saying, you know, Kanye, before he got involved with them, and we will see more of that down the road from him, is actually extremely intuitive when he's 
centered and in, you know, a good place. That's why he was able to make the great music that he was. Because keep in mind, Kanye wasn't coming out here talking about selling drugs and shooting people and doing the typical gangster shit. He was talking about dropping out of college, trying to afford, you know, nice clothes and, uh, you know, stuff like that in his music and dating and you know, but he wasn't like, oh, let's go snort a brick of cocaine and like do some molly. And that was never Kanye's thing. But Kanye has always managed to get people interested, you know, in his songs. Some of them are so iconic. Gold Digger, you know, Through the Wire made us all like be like, oh my God, who is this guy? And she's like, that's his intuition, you know, that he's able to do that. And she's like, if he didn't have that there's no way with the style of music that he was coming at the things that he was saying in his music there's no way that he would have been able to last in a genre that was all about those things and so it, a lot of that really was Kanye's actual spiritual gifts that led him in that direction to be successful and Donda is saying he shut so much of that out because he's afraid and you know we've seen the Kardashians they've called John Edwards and Tyler the medium they always get those like show business ones who just tell you a bunch of shit that they googled about you to make it seem like ooh, you know uh, <laughs> don't get me started on those but she's like you know, when um, Kim had the medical medium on and Kanye was all skeptical and like, I don't want to get involved with this. She's like, that's how Kanye's always been every time they bring psychics and mediums around. And Kim's always like, come talk to your mom. And he's like, no, I don't want to. And she's like, first of all, Kanye's own intuition, as much as he's tried to shove it down, felt like I don't want to... I don't want to talk to the psychic or the person that you're telling me because they're probably a witch too and you're probably making them read me. They're going to tell me one thing and really they're gathering information on what spell to put me under tonight. Oh, ooh, you know, it's like, oh yeah, Kanye, your mom says hi. And really the psychic's like, so we need to actually call this spirit and we need to do this spell, you know, reading his energy to see what'll work the worst. So it, you know, it is a combination of that he's scared to connect to his mom for more than one reason, and we'll talk about that in a second, but also that he was scared of what they, you know, were all, their ulterior motives. So part of the reason why Connie is scared to connect to his mom is because he knows that she, he has this fear deep down inside that, you know, she actually wasn't happy with him being with Kim and wouldn't have chosen that for him. And he was afraid to hear it because it's like, what's kind of the worst thing in the world? Making your parent that you really care about and you care about how they see you disappointed. And especially if that parent was no longer here, nobody wants to think that somebody that they love on the other side and want to connect to so badly and miss is going to come through and tell them some shit they don't want to hear, right? <laughs> That'd be heartbreaking. But his mom's like, I would have told him because I don't mince words and I'm not going to, I wasn't about to let my son, you know, go through all of this. And so that was something that was extremely frustrating to her that she, that he wouldn't listen. She talks to him a lot through North. And, th and she tries, sometimes he sees her in his dreams. She's saying a lot of the times when Kanye can't sleep, it's not just a symptom of his bipolar, you know, mania episodes, but that it's about the anxiety that he really feels about going to sleep because he's had those dreams and he's, it's scared the shit out of him. And she's saying it's not just her that's shown up in his dreams and tried to talk to him or warn him. It's like other people, like grandmothers and aunts and uncles that have passed that Kanye recognizes who these people are. And it scares the crap out of him too because she's saying that there was a good, there's been a few different periods over the years that they've all shown up in Kanye's dreams and tried to warn him away and protect him. 
and because it was scaring him you know like he just gets all anxiety and he doesn't want to go to sleep so he will find ways to not do that so it, when she knows Connie is not going to sleep and he's not going to pay attention she will say certain things that or put certain messages in North and use North as the channel to try to get to Kanye. So sometimes, you know, North will be like, I had a dream about grandma and, or daddy, I saw your mom and she said she loves you and you don't listen to her. Like she said, that's literally things that North has said to Kanye that she made North say to him. So it, and she's so connected to North. She loves her. She's like, she is 100% mini Kanye to a T. Very opinionated, very creative, very out of the box, very blunt and straightforward, and I'm not gonna mince words, and I'm not be doing it to be mean. I'm just telling you how I feel, because I'm very honest, you know? <laughs> it's so cute. She's just like, I love her so much, I love her so much. She loves all the kids, but she really just loves, 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 loves North. Just because, like I said, she's saying she reminds her so much of him um she's obviously extremely angry at the way that the Kardashians have treated Kanye she said full well Kim knew that Kanye had mental health issues he may not have been diagnosed with bipolar 100% but Donda said that she got Kanye a diagnosis of depression and anxiety in the past and he you know went through the process of taking the regular antidepressants and she's like they didn't work on him and she's like whoever did it like you know did the diagnosis and helped him and stuff in the past she's like they didn't really have a true understanding or knowledge enough about bipolar disorder and I know this from working in mental health and going to school for mental health that, you know, oftentimes medications that are just meant for depression given to somebody with bipolar disorder can actually make them worse because their body processes things completely different. And that's just why they have a different type of depression. So they need different kinds of medications. And so she's actually saying that they almost made Kanye a little bit like like more depressed and made him start having like almost like suicidal thoughts and so he quit them and so they tried to work on other things and she said a part of that was her really kind of staying on top of him at times and she's saying that you know he told Kim up front that he was had you know been to a therapist and they told him that he had depression and anxiety so you know, just because he didn't say he had bipolar disorder, he still had a mental health issue and Donda still feels like they took advantage of that. And it's like they would talk him into things. She's saying Kris Jenner got him to sign contracts when he wasn't really in the most present state of mind. Like he wasn't bad enough to be hospitalized and he wasn't going on Twitter rants. But she's like, you can just look at Kanye and know when he's not going to be able to focus and he's having an off day where he's about to get into a manic episode. And so Chris would be like, oh, Kanye's about to have another meltdown. <gasps> Hurry up, we need him to sign all these contracts before he's in the hospital. And then they say that, oh, he was mentally incapable of signing this because I need that deal done, you know? And he would sign this shit. And he, she's like, he would do deals even when he wasn't okay space just because it was like Kim would talk him into it or Chris would make him feel guilty and it would be like okay fine you can sell posters of me and Spencer's so you can make money because you're telling me that you don't have any deals for Kendall right now and you're losing money like she would do manipulative stuff like that and Donda's like they very much hatched a plan for Kim to get in front of her son to save themselves from the backlash and the inevitable fallout that was coming from what happened with the 72 day marriage and Donda's like they would have been canceled they would have disappeared it would have been oh what happened to them you know and she would have been the next Paris Hilton and we would have moved on to the next girl and Kanye was brought in to stir up the interest because Kanye was popular and it was like of course you want to see, like, oh my god, Kanye West is on Keeping Up with the Kardashians. What is he like when he's dating somebody? I want to see this because, 
you know, we'd see them at award shows, but seeing you on a show interacting with your girlfriend is an entirely different thing. And so we wanted to see is Kanye is wild and out there with Kim or is he somehow like this calm person around her or something? And is this a real relationship or is this going to be another Reggie Bush or whatever? Plus, it gave them access to all kinds of things that they never had being, you know, designer clothes and things like that, that people were finally starting to let them into Met Galas and Vogue events when they were never invited to those kind of things and so looked down upon and she's like, they used my son and sucked him dry and didn't care when he lost his minds. She's, she's just saying they have a hell of a karma coming to them. Both here and on the other side. They have pissed off too many black ancestors, not just Kanye's. But those of every black person that they have stepped upon and Kris Jenner can do whatever she wants in caves in the Caucasus Mountains in Armenia and call as many witches as she wants but I think literal armies of black ancestors is really a hard thing to fight so it you know Donda is saying that this next year is going to be very much a spiritual battle as well as a physical battle when it comes to her son. But Kanye is very aware of the things that they have done to him and he is ready to go get that part taken care of. And he will. So expect to see Kanye in Haiti, Cuba. Africa, travel in between the three, maybe even the DR. They may say that it's part of that deal that he's, you know, part of to help rebuild Haiti. Or, you know, it's some sort of inspiration for music or some trip that he wanted to take or whatever. But Donda's saying it's a hell of a lot deeper than that and she is proud as shit that her son finally listens. And she is celebrating that he is afraid. She said it's going to be a rough ride, but my son is finally going to be okay. She just hugged me. So, when you guys ask me why I don't like the Kardashians, Donda's being careful with her words. <laughs> they do stuff like this they don't care about taking somebody else's soul they don't care about taking advantage of somebody that has a mental health issue they don't care about stepping on the blacks of, on the backs of black people and destroying them I've got some karma I would never want and I don't know how anybody's soul can be at peace And the funny thing is, Kanye was the one that was so worried about hearing about how his parent would be disappointed in him. When really, she keeps saying, well, you know, all those psychic mediums they talk to just keep blowing smoke up their ass because they're scared to tell them the truth. But somebody else's dad ain't too happy with any of them right now. So, with that said, you guys, Donda would like to leave it on a good note and ask you all to pray for Kanye because he is going to need it. Whether you are a fan of him or agree with, you know, things that he said or done, he's still a human being. He does not have a bad heart. You know, he makes mistakes. He says stupid things. But this man did not come onto this planet looking to hurt people purposely. And that's not really his intention. Sometimes he does things that hurt people because he can be thoughtless or speak too quickly or say things in the wrong way, you know, or do stupid things for attention. But a lot of that too, you guys, I mean, please look up bipolar mania and you will understand that 
the religious ideologies and all of that kind of stuff, you know, and a lot of his outbursts is very much tied to his manic episodes and people almost can't control themselves during that. So let's just, you know, you don't have to agree with it, but have some empathy and understanding. Um, and like I said, at the end of the day, he's a human being who got caught up in a mess that he didn't need to be in. She's reminding me to say that, you know, remember, they always go after men who are missing a parent, their parents live elsewhere so they can't be close, and what do they do? Hi, we're your new family. And then you're sucked in. And, you know, it's evil. But anyways, guys, I love you so much. Donda says thank you for listening to her and giving her the opportunity to speak. She is confirming what I said in a previous reading that we will see Kanye step away from being the Jesus freak and more accepting and connected to a more spiritual place instead where he will acknowledge and use his own intuition again. And part of that is him going and getting what has been put upon him off of him and really connecting to his own soul and his own spirit again and reclaiming his own energy and going through that healing. So I love you guys. And if you wanted to book your own personal private reading with me, all my information is in the description box below. Make sure you follow me on Station Head. You do not have to have an account with Apple or Spotify. That's only if you want to listen to music on the Station Head app. I'm not playing any music on my channel right now, and even if I was, you would still be able to listen when we're having conversations. It would just not allow you to hear the songs, um, but that's where we can, you know, be a little more open about what it is that Kris Jenner does to people and talk about those kinds of things without worrying about YouTube getting on us. So anyways, guys, I love you all so very much, and I will see you again soon. Bye.